My name is Hyla Crane. I'm the Executive Director at the Marco Island Center for the Arts. As you know, as we respond to this crisis, the Art Center has closed its doors to the public until May 11th. Right now, the exhibit you see behind you is Flash, 50 Years of Fashion, which remains with us. There is a tour of this exhibit on our YouTube page, which we hope you will visit. And today, we are going to be speaking with Miriam Creel. Now, some of you know Miriam, who is at our front desk and is our in-house graphic designer. What you may not know is that Miriam is an artist in her own right, a very unique way of working with art, and we're going to learn a little bit more about it today. Good morning, Miriam. How are you? Hi. Um, Miriam, can you just where you're from and just a little bit about yourself? All right. Um, I'm from, originally from South Africa. Uh, I came over with my family. Uh, my husband is an architect, and uh, we came through an H-1B visa, visa, and um, starting here with nothing. We literally came with two suitcases each. One of my suitcases had books, and the other one had some of my clothing. And uh, we had to start from scratch. For me, starting from scratch just means I have to have something with me that feeds my soul. Books at the time was feeding my soul. That's where I get my inspiration from. And so starting new from scratch from South Africa was not that hard. When you have a little bit of what's important with you, it's like the tree that has its roots in something and it draws water. And that's how it was for me. So it wasn't that hard coming here. The culture is different, uh, but now I'm like totally American. <laughs> <laughs> I need my McDonald's down the road. Oh, it's a little different now under the circumstances, but yes. Uh, that's most of South African, but now totally American. Well, we are very lucky. I know you've done some other things, but we are grateful that it has led you to us here at the Marco Island Center for the Arts. And you have done an amazing job um, working on our branding, working on all of our collateral materials, actually creating the design and graphics for all of our collateral materials. But today we're going to talk a little bit about your own artwork. Um, can you tell me when you first became interested in art and the type of artwork you do? My interest in art started um, many years ago. I was a, a young girl, uh, probably a preteen. Um, when I found um, that I could copy something really well. And then I realized, like, hey, wow, way back when I was in, in kindergarten, there was a time where I was working with, uh, with we were doing an art class, and uh, we had to put like a blob of ink on the, on the paper, and then you have a straw, and then you have to make like a little a tree out of it, and apparently I did such a good job. The teacher took me and took me to the other classes um, to show them how to do that. And I'm like, hmm. But it never really stuck with me. And then a couple of years later, um, my father gave me a camera. Now, my father uh, was the head of the photography department of one of the largest magazine corporations in South Africa. So I, I grew up with the, the photo genre. And once I had that camera in my hand, it was just something that clicked in me. Usually when, when you observe, you see something one way, but when you have something in your hand, like a camera that captures only a second in time, and afterwards when you look back, you're like, wow, look at that moment in time, look at the, the Kodak moment. Can you talk a little bit about the type of work you do? Because you're not simply a landscape photographer or a photographer who does travel photography or nature or like the pictures behind us, which are fashion editorial pieces. Your work is a little different. Can you yes. talk to us about your particular style and the kind of work you do? Because um, I think that's going to be interesting to people. Can you tell us that? Yeah, sure. So uh, with the photography, as I said, with the photography was part of my whole growing up. And then moving forward, uh, several years later, um, pregnant with my son, holed up in the house, uh, um, I was going to be a stay-at-home mom, and then suddenly I pulled out my art stuff. I didn't have a camera at the time, didn't know what happened to my original paint types. I started drawing, got into pencil drawing, and then I evolved a little bit more from the pencil drawing. 
And then we went on vacation to South Africa, and there was um, a lady who was carrying a baby on her back, and I took a photograph of her. And coming back to the USA, then that, that just stayed in the back of my head. That woman, every now and again, the image of this woman in the back of my head, and it just, it just some people would say, haunted me. You know, it was just, it just stayed with me and stayed with me. And eventually I said, oh, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just, I'm just gonna draw this lady. I have to just draw it. Even though I had the photograph, I took a pencil drawing, a color pencil drawing, and I did this life-size pencil drawing of this lady with the baby on the back. And I was hooked. I'm like, I need to find my next subject. And so I took my camera, got some ladies from church and said, come, we're going to take photographs of you. And we did, we took photographs and I'm like, there's nothing that was, that caught my attention that I was willing to spend two years doing a, a, a pencil drawing. So my pursuit started with photography, trying to find that one portrait that moved me so much, I was willing to put in a year or two years working grafting away um, at this pencil portrait. And I never found it, but I continued to pursue, continued to pursue, and then eventually you get used to it. Just like eating certain foods, you get used to it, and you have a hunger, you develop a hunger for it. So my hunger for portraiture and photography and art, just during that hunger, just gelled together. And when I found Photoshop artistry in a book, I saw somebody doing Photoshop artistry, and I'm like, oh, I want to learn to do that. It was a, a father who was walking in the high wind, and the son was holding on to his, his flaps of, the, of his coat, and he was hanging in the wind. I'm like, I so want to try to do that. And that's how I got into Photoshop artistry. I found a um, teacher online that could teach me how to do Photoshop, and that's where that started. Wow, so can you explain the role that this digital art is going to play in your work? You've spoken to how portraiture is central to what interests you, but you aren't doing drawings on paper anymore, you're doing your work all at the computer once you've taken your photos. Can you explain a little bit about that role of digital art per se? The digital art, well for one thing it goes much faster. Uh, in the days when I was still drawing, um, it just took too long, and I just wanted to pop things out. I, I, I wanted to explore different thoughts and movements. Part of my, of who I am as an artist is I'm an observer. I love to observe human nature, I love to observe humans, I love to observe them as individuals, um, as groups, um, on continents, and that is really what makes it amazing how my observing in my art thing comes together and it just adds so much more depth to what I'm observing in front of me, whether it's an individual or a group of people from or an organization. Now, that was a long and lengthy process. It took a lot of time and you have to have the light hitting just right. Now with digital art, it's the same process. I don't conjure it up in my head, maybe it will spark of an idea, but I look and I see what I have. So if I have an image of somebody that I took, I will look at the image and say, well, Miriam, what do you see? Then I can go back in my portfolio of images, because I'm always taking a lot of photos, I'll say, well, I see this person doing such and such and such. Then in my portfolio, I will look to see if I have a mountain, if I see them walking in a mount, uh, by the mountain, then I'll put the mountain and I'll say, okay, now the person's walking in front of the mountain. What are they doing walking in front of the mountain? And so I'll add, just like when I would sit with my pencil with a blank piece of scrumpled paper saying the light's hitting it, what does that look like? That looks like a little character doing this, that, or the other. Where, where are they? And I do the same thing with my digital art, that it goes so much quicker. And I don't, I'm not limited by sunlight. Um, I can do it any time of the day or night, which usually I do do. <laughs> <laughs> because there's, there's just so little time, so much to do in so little time. So what I hear you saying and what, um, is that you are using multiple images Usually what you've taken, do you ever use images that you get from other sources, stock photography, is that something that you'll use? Yes, yes. Um, the, 
you're going through stuff so fast to produce so much. And with producing more, you, you, you realize your own limitations. And then you realize, well, I want to I wanna do this. And then they're like, I don't know how to do it. Uh, now I need to learn how to do that in Photoshop. And that creates a hunger. The, the more you work, the more your hunger is there and the more you, you want to learn more about your art. So it just feeds itself like a waterfall. It just, you know, it's just a never ending process. So with that, um, you just run out of your own footage. You just, there's only so many times I can ask my friends to model for me. And there's only so many times you can use the same model. And um, that's, thank goodness, we have um, very nice online websites like Fixity and some other sites that provide free material for artists to work with. Um, even within my own, stu uh, the student group that I belong to, the Awake uh, student group, they provide for us generously uh, model footage, stock footage to work with. So, mm -hmm. yes. Excellent. So basically we're taking multiple images and mm -hmm. a subject matter and the environment you want to place them in, putting them together and then using digital art to create the final vision. Is that? Yes. Yeah. So some of the ones are, they look more photographic, uh, but then there are the other ones where I really build the storyline. The storyline is important to me. I love a good story. I love to read. So obviously and I love good movies. So obviously I want to build the story. So looking at my, my subjects, I keep adding to them, keep adding to them until the story is complete. They must have an environment in which the story takes place. There must be some action. And um, ultimately, it's I, I do art for myself, not for the public. That's why my stuff is not out there for sale, really, because I do it for my own enjoyment. Because I thrive on, on creating, uh, creating that art. And I understand that. However, your work is extraordinary, and perhaps one day you will be generous enough to put it out there for sale so that people in the public can have pieces themselves. And of course, it will be for sale when you do at the Marco Island Center for the Arts. Um, quick question, how do you think digital art and photography are currently impacting um, the art and design world at this time? You know, we here at the Art Center have a lot of discussions about uh, photography, how does it fit into the art world as compared to, as you said, drawing or painting, um, you know, those frequently, you can have she clays, but they are an image that does take and it's sometimes an extraordinary amount of time to create. Can you tell me what you think the impact is um, on the art and design world now that so many artists can work on their computer to create what they want? Um, that is a good question, especially in our current environment where so many of the schools and universities are forced to, to shut down. Um, but it certainly has a huge uh, uh, place of importance. Uh, recently, a visitor came and, and uh, looked at my work and we talked a little bit about it and it turned out he was a university professor and he offered the information. He said that um, he personally sees that as the future of art programs um, and universities. And I thought about that for a minute, and of course, uh, this is my medium, you know, this is my passion, this is who I am as an artist. Uh, of course, I'm like, yeah, of course, this is the way. But now, especially with this whole coronavirus uh, disaster pandemic uh, worldwide, I'm starting to realize, like, hey, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. Every cloud has a certain line, and out of this, uh, maybe there will be a whole new generation of digital artists. Maybe even some of our artists who, who, who have been toying with the idea of digital art, uh, but are still within that, uh, within that medium, the, the, the regular mediums, might consider it. And they might find out that they're pretty good at that. I can see some of them, because really with any kind of art form, you're all layering. You, you are layering your watercolors, you're layering your oil colors. And it's the same with my, with my format, the digital format, it's layers. And then layering um, is so much fun because you can layer anything in there and you have the options are enormous. They're enormous. It's like, it's like little layers of plastic. Each little plastic layer has like an item. So you imagine that if you have each item is on a different tiered plastic sheet and you can see right through all of them. And if you don't want the sun over here, you can move the sun over there. So you just move your sheet or you 
layer them a little bit forward, go backward kind of thing. You can up the color to each layer and each little item, you can stretch them, make them bigger, just like that, where an oil painting or, or acrylics, you're, you're stuck. You know, you have to just work with what you got. But with the, with the digital art, um, yeah, you can change things, you can up it, you can, you can make it anyway. And now with a lot of the new programming, when you're done, you can give it that watercolor look or you can give it that acrylic oil painting look if, if that's your thing, if, that, if that's what you really enjoy doing. When I saw that picture in the book, I'm like, wow, I still gotta, I gotta find somebody who can teach me that. And then I found him online and he offered Skype classes. And so here I was, midnight, my time with Karash, and we were going through Skype. And that's how I started in Photoshop. And he would, he would teach me in real time how to do this. So it's two worlds coming together. And for me too, my photography, art, and working in this digital media, to me was just such a, it's such a global village, and I totally love that. I love global village, and this is that—that's the the future of it. That you can connect with anybody, anywhere, at any time to learn that craft. So yeah. you've talked to us about um, your process now and what inspires you. Let's take a.